Hello, welcome to Earth Archives. Many friends know that the Earth's land is divided into several continents and many islands, but do you know? In ancient times, the whole world was actually one continent. This is not a fantasy, but the result of research. Today we are going to tell the story of Pangaea. Before the show starts, please help subscribe, like, and share. Please turn on the little bell and it would be great if you can leave your comments. Can you imagine, were the seven continents and all the islands on Earth actually one continent in ancient times? Pangaea was a massive supercontinent that formed between 320 million and 195 million years ago. At that time, Earth didn't have seven continents, but instead one giant one, which was surrounded by a single ocean called Panthalassa. The explanation for Pangaea's formation ushered in the modern theory of plate tectonics, which posits that the Earth's outer shell is broken up into several plates that slide over Earth's rocky shell, the mantle. Over the course of the planet's 4.5 billion year history, several supercontinents have formed and broken up, a result of churning and circulation in the Earth's mantle, which makes up 84% of the planet's volume, according to the US Geological Survey. This breakup and formation of supercontinents has dramatically altered the planet's history. This is what's driven the entire evolution of the planet through time. This is the major backbeat of the planet, said Brendan Murphy, a geology professor at the St. Francis Xavier University, in Antigonish, Nova Scotia. More than a century ago, the scientist Alfred Wegener proposed the notion of an ancient supercontinent, which he named Pangaea, sometimes spelled Pangaea, after putting together several lines of evidence. The first and most obvious was that the continents fit together like a tongue and groove, something that was quite noticeable on any accurate map, Murphy said. Another telltale hint that Earth's continents were all one landmass comes from the geologic record. Coal deposits found in Pennsylvania have a similar composition to those spanning across Poland, Great Britain and Germany from the same time period. That indicates that North America and Europe must have once been a single landmass. And the orientation of magnetic minerals in geologic sediments reveals how Earth's magnetic poles migrated over geologic time, Murphy said. In the fossil record, identical plants, such as the extinct seed fern glossopteres, are found on now widely disparate continents. And mountain chains that now lie on different continents, such as the Appalachians in the United States and the Atlas Mountains spanning Morocco, Algeria and Tunisia were all part of the central Pangaea Mountains, formed through the collision of the supercontinents Gondwana and Laurussia. The word, Pangaea, comes from the Greek, pan, which means, all, and, Gaia, or, Earth. The supercontinent formed through a gradual process spanning a few hundred million years. In the early Phanerozoic Eon, 541 million years ago to now, almost all of the continents were in the southern hemisphere, with Gondwana, the largest continent, spanning from the South Pole to the equator, according to a chapter in the scientific book, Ancient Supercontinents and the Paleogeography of Earth, Elsevier, 2021. The northern hemisphere was largely covered by the Panthalassic Ocean. Another ocean, called Iapetus, after a mythical Greek titan, between the Paleo continents Laurentia, Baltica and Gondwana, began to close during the Ordovician period, 485 million to 444 million years ago, and then disappeared during the Silurian period, 444 million to 419 million years ago, when Baltica and Avalonia collided with Laurentia to form Laurussia, according to the chapter, Phanerozoic Paleogeography and Pangaea. Finally, about 320 million years ago, there was a major collision, geologically speaking, when Gondwana, Laurussia, and intervening terrains collided to form the Pangaea supercontinent, according to the chapter, written by Earth scientists Tron Torsvik, Matthew Domeyer and Robin Cox. However, Pangaea wasn't the megalith most people think it is. Pangaea never included all the continents at any one time, according to the chapter. For instance, the Paleotethys Ocean to the east of Pangaea remained wide throughout the Carboniferous, 359 million to 299 million years ago, and presented something of a barrier between the supercontinent and a number of large, independent Asian terrains, including Tarim, North China, South China, and Anemia. Later, during the Permian period, 299 million to 251 million years ago, many former Peri-Gondwanan terrains drifted off the northeast Gondwana margin commencing the opening of the Neotithes Ocean. Pangaea broke up in several phases between 195 million and 170 million years ago. The breakup began about 195 million years ago in the early Jurassic period, when the Central Atlantic Ocean opened, according to the chapter. The supercontinent fractured largely along previous sutures. 
Gondwana, what is now Africa, South America, Antarctica, India and Australia, first split from Laurasia, Eurasia and North America. Then about 150 million years ago, Gondwana broke up. India peeled off from Antarctica, and Africa and South America rifted, according to a 1970 article in the Journal of Geophysical Research. Around 60 million years ago, North America split off from Eurasia, having one massive landmass made for very different climatic cycles. For instance, the interior of the continent may have been utterly dry, as it was locked behind massive mountain chains that blocked all moisture or rainfall, Murphy said. Climate models confirm that the continental interior of Pangaea was extremely seasonal, according to a 2016 article in the journal Paleogeography, Paleoclimatology, Paleoecology. The researchers in this study used biological and physical data from the Maradi Formation, a region of layered paleosols, fossil soils, in northern Niger, to reconstruct the ecosystem and climate during the time period when Pangaea existed. Comparable with the modern-day African Namib Desert and the Lake Eyre Basin in Australia, the climate was generally arid with short, recurring wet periods that occasionally included catastrophic flash floods. The climate also influenced where animals lived. During the late Triassic, reptile-like animals in the family Procolophonidae lived in one region, while mammal relatives, known as cynodonts, lived in another, a 2011 study in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences found. Cynodonts inhabited one tropical area of Pangaea, where monsoon-like rains fell twice a year. Up north, Procolophonids lived in temperate regions where it only rained once a year. It's likely that the Cynodonts needed a water-rich area, which restricted their movements on Pangaea, the researchers said. Pangaea existed for more than 100 million years, and during that time many animal groups thrived. During the Permian period, insects such as beetles and dragonflies flourished, as did the predecessors of mammals, the synapsids. But the existence of Pangaea overlapped with the worst mass extinction in history, the Permian-Triassic (PTR) extinction event. Also called the Great Dying, it occurred around 252 million years ago and caused 96% of all marine species and around 70% of terrestrial species to go extinct, according to the Geological Society of America. The early Triassic period saw the rise of archosaurs, a group of animals that eventually gave rise to crocodiles, birds and a plethora of reptiles, including pterosaurs. And about 230 million years ago some of the earliest dinosaurs emerged on Pangaea, including theropods, largely carnivorous dinosaurs that mostly had air-filled bones and feathers similar to birds. The current configuration of continents is unlikely to be the last. Supercontinents have formed several times in Earth's history, only to be split off into new continents. Right now for instance, Australia is inching toward Asia, and the eastern portion of Africa is slowly peeling off from the rest of the continent. Scientists have created mathematical, 3D simulations to better understand the mechanisms behind continental movement. In a 2018 article in the journal Geoscience Frontiers, Earth scientists Masaki Yoshida and M. Santosh explained how they produced simulations of large-scale continental movements since the breakup of Pangaea about 200 million years ago. The models show how tectonic plate motion and mantle convection forces work together to break apart and move large land masses. For example, Pangaea's large mass insulated the mantle underneath, causing mantle flows that triggered the initial breakup of the supercontinent. Radioactive decay of the upper mantle also raised the temperature, causing upward mantle flows that broke off the Indian subcontinent and initiated its northern movement. Models suggest that over millions of years, the Pacific Ocean will close as Australia, North America, Africa, and Eurasia come together in the northern hemisphere. Eventually, these continents will merge, forming a supercontinent called Amasia. The two remaining continents, Antarctica and South America, are predicted to remain relatively immobile and separate from the new supercontinent.